Namaste. So last night, one of our viewers left a nice comment about Brihara Arnaka being about transformation and that sacrifice means changing one body into another, one state of being into another. And of course, in this case, we're talking about yoga. So we're going from a lower to a higher state of being. And for this to happen, the lower state has to be let go because you can only be in one state of being at a time. So if you want a higher state of being, you have to let go of the lower state of being. And then the ultimate, this means death. I mean, we're all going to die anyway. So if one dies consciously, sacrificing the present state of being for something higher, then one can go really anywhere. Anywhere that one can conceive, anywhere that one can desire. So the rites of the Vedas are sacrifices because in these rites, various articles are offered into the mouth of the sacred fire, the Vaishvanara fire, uh, the Ahavaniya fire, the Arka fire, these are different grades of sacrificial fires. The uh, different grades lead to different states. If one sacrifices to the fire, uh, these articles meant for the gods, the devas, one goes to the devas. But if one sacrifices, for example, in the horse sacrifice or meditation on the horse sacrifice, if one sacrifices to the ultimate being, Virat or Hiranyagarbha, one becomes Hiranyagarbha in the next life. So this is the meaning of sacrifice, that we give up the present body, we give up the present life, we give up the present sense objects and concepts and state of consciousness for a higher one. And we do that by offering to that higher being, uh, meditating on that higher being. And by this meditation, by this offering, by this sacrifice, one becomes the higher being. So ultimately, since we all have to die anyway, we should die in such a way that it becomes a sacrifice to the highest conception that we can support, the highest state of being that we can cognize. This is yoga. Yoga means joining. So how do we join the individual with the absolute or, how, or the lower with the higher? Through sacrifice, through meditation, that we've been over several times meditating on a form of sacrifice, such as the horse sacrifice, Ashvamedha, is just as good as performing the sacrifice externally. Jagra consciousness means external consciousness, but Svapna means internal consciousness. And in Svapna, we still have the same senses, hearing, sight, smell, taste, and touch. But we're not using the sense organs of the body. We're withdrawing, pratyahara, withdrawing the sense from the sense organ. So it becomes virtual. It becomes a limb of the mind. Huh? So in this way, we enter meditation. And in meditation, we can perform any action that we can perform externally. And actually much, much more. Because externally, for example, nobody has the facility to perform the horse sacrifice. You know, you have to be a great king. You have to be an emperor 
and you let the horse run. And if anybody challenges it, you have to fight them and defeat them. So nobody can perform. And plus, so many learned brahmanas are necessary. So much paraphernalia, gold and so on are necessary and much wealth to be given away to the brahmans, priests, and the attendants of the sacrifice. So practically speaking, you know, only the ruler of a, of a country could perform this. And today they're all demons, so it's not going to happen. What's going to happen or what can happen is that you can meditate on it. You can meditate on being the emperor who lets the horse roam, huh? just like Virat stated in the sixth mantra of the second chapter of, of the second Brahmana of the first chapter of Brihadaranyakapanishad that we just went over, that he let the horse run after he, he left his body and it began to swell and it became a horse. So he, as fire, as Brahma, let the horse run for a whole year. And that's why he's called Arka. Arka means the sun, and the movement of the sun is what determines the year. So as the sun moves through all 12 of the houses of the zodiac, it creates the various conditions that we experience in embodied life. So the sun is the controller, the sun is the master. The sun, as the arc of fire, is the ultimate recipient of sacrifice. So we can sacrifice this body to the sun at the time of death by meditation and become Brahma or Hiranyagarbha or Virat in the next life. This is the yoga. This is the sacrifice. This is the transformation. Now, having said all that, <laughs> transformation is not the final enlightenment. It can't be. Because Brahman is without parts, without change, without transformation, without relation, uh, inconceivable, indescribable, and can only be inferred, not seen. There is no empirical evidence for Brahman because Brahman cannot be known. Why? Because Brahman is the knower. Huh? If there's some difference, then you can have a relation between the knower and the known. But in Brahman, there's no differences, there's no boundaries, there's no change. So it can never be something that is known. It can only be the knower. And Brahman is the knower in all bodies already. So it's not like we have to become Brahman or attain Brahman or be transformed into Brahman or acquire Brahman. Huh? All these are impossible because we already are Brahman. We already have Brahman. We have already become Brahman. In fact, Brahman has become the world. And that's why we see objects. That's why we have change and transformation in the world. But that is not going to bring us to the ultimate enlightenment. Only knowledge. And what is that knowledge? Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahman. Tattva Masi, you are also Brahman by nature. Why? Because you are the knower. You cannot know yourself. Just like a mirror cannot reflect itself. Just like your eye cannot see itself. It can only see other things. Similarly, Brahman as the self, as the knower, as the seer, the drik, huh, can only know other things, the drishya, 
that which is seen. And the discrimination, the viveka, between the seer and the seen is called the drigvrishya viveka, the discrimination or the distinction between the knower and the known. And what is that? The knower cannot be known. The known cannot be a knower. <laughs> this is the absolute philosophy. This is the Upanishadic truth. This is the content of self-realization. This is the knowledge that destroys ignorance. Once you have it, then everything that you thought was true is sacrificed in the fire of knowledge. Everything that you thought you were is sacrificed in the fire of consciousness because you are consciousness alone. That consciousness then perceives different objects which are different from it by nature, but it cannot perceive itself. And since the self is identical in all beings, we cannot perceive consciousness in them either. Consciousness is imperceptible. It's invisible. There is a whole invisible world of pure consciousness, which we cannot see with these senses or any instruments based on them. And that includes knowledge, logic, words, symbols, mathematics, science, all that is useless when it comes to understanding or realizing the self. The understanding has to happen first, then the realization will come. How is that? Because as Shankaracharya says in his commentary on Brihadara Nakopanishad, when one understands I am Brahman, then everything else like the body, the mind, the senses, the possessions, the experiences in the world, perception, desire, and so on, become superfluous. What do we need with them? If we are already the supreme, what can we gain from them that is anywhere near the value of self-realization? because self-realization means the end of suffering. Suffering comes from perception, isn't it? Even the things that we think are enjoyments are actually sufferings. Why? Because they involve change and change or transformation is death. The death of one state of being and the arising of another. So in this way, to be free from death, to be immortal, means to stop change, stop this transformation, stop the process of rebirth. And that is done by becoming the Supreme, when we already are the Supreme. <laughs> so it's a simple realization. And once one has this knowledge, one ceases to work with the external senses and become satisfied with the bliss, knowledge, and happiness of being Brahman, being the self, being the absolute. This is the perfection of all sacrifice. Aum Tat Sat, Aum Shakti Aum. Om Namah Shivaya.